you may want to grab a cup of coffee or a cup of tea because today is a sketchbook tour. I love sketchbook tours because I love flipping through these. I get very inspired. I'm also looking through a lot of my sketches lately because I am working on some really large paintings that are kind of like a collage of all the things that I love. And so I've been looking through my sketchbooks for inspiration of things to paint on these really large canvases. They're a mixture of like my birds and still life and landscape and whimsical things. I'm painting them in a way that kind of feels like how a dream is where everything's mushed together and overlaps and is a little fuzzy. I mean, the things I'm painting aren't like fuzzy, but I just mean kind of the concept of things that go in and out. So that's what I've been thinking about. So I've got two different sketchbooks to go through today. One is a smaller version, which is the art creations. I'll have everything that I mention linked below, whether it's like things like my sketchbooks or people or videos or classes that I mentioned. Everything will be linked below in the description. But the smaller one is my art creations. This larger one is, oh wait, let me go grab the info. I had this over by my desk because I just ordered another one of these or put this in my basket. It's interesting. I did not care for the sketchbook when I first started it. And by the end of it, I was like, I really like it. I love the size. It was just the paper that I wasn't sure about. So there is the information. It's not cheap, I will say that, but I've really, really enjoyed working in it. I forget how expensive it is by the time I'm done <laughs> or by the time it like gets here and I start painting in it. So the cost doesn't always bother me, but let's start with this larger one first. So this is actually like the cover page, not cover, I don't know, the in, the in, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Basically, this isn't like the paper paper of the sketchbook. This right here is the cover. And then this is like a real thin piece of paper that the sketchbook begins and ends with. But I use the whole thing. The sketchbook is also not necessarily in order because there were some pages that I forgot about or skipped on accident or went back and painted over. And so things are a little bit jumbly, but these are some self portraits. There is a video up on YouTube where I went into this. I kind of go in and out of seasons where I paint myself. So I'll link that video below. For some reason, this sketchbook ended up being very figure heavy. I don't know why, but this is my friend, Emily Powell, painted her. This is a painting that I actually painted over. I had painting that I started and didn't finish so I came back and painted this uh these these ducks which I really like and this is just done with acrylic this is a painting I may have done in my landscape class taking notes in the landscape I can't remember it could have just been one that I did but again this is an acrylic paint really thick I can tell I painted probably there's probably a couple different paintings underneath this this has a lot of texture to it it is very thick like you want to touch it for sure i do have um, a class on my acrylics if you are interested in how i use acrylics um, i don't remember what all i used in this painting i do know there's some soft pastels i painted this from a sketch, a smaller sketch that I did on location and I've done several paintings from that smaller sketch. This is another painting from a smaller sketch that I did on location. I think I may have combined a couple sketches together. This looks like I may have used maybe my watercolor gouache palette. I also have a video on my favorite watercolor and gouaches if you want to watch that. I'll link that below. This was like a day where I just needed to play. I think I've used everything in this sketch. Inks, oil pastels, wax pastels, acrylic, and I just kept building it up and pushing the envelope on things. I think this would make a really pretty pattern or like wallpaper. I'd like that in my bathroom. This sketchbook also, like my hands get dirty as I flip through this. That's a good sign, I think. This was done from an on-location painting I did. Actually, I think I filmed 
when I painted at this location. Yes, this video is called Granted Access because I got access to this property I've been viewing for a long time and I was really excited to paint on it. Sorry my voice is so scratchy. I'm having really bad allergies. I can tell I've used, you name it, I've used it on this. I love this. Yeah, these next two paintings I love. This was of St. Michael's and it looks like see a hair there but it looks like it's embedded yeah into whatever that is it looks like maybe I've used my watercolor for this this was a, a really really quick sketch and this one was too I know I use my watercolors on this I love this painting so much I love the simple shapes the colors in the sky and I did really enjoy working with watercolor on this paper because it's very absorbent but I use my watercolors and my gouache like I do paint I really load up the brush I use it thick yeah I just love everything about this painting right here this is the same location as this I paint this a lot. This is of a park, Shelby Park here in Nashville that I go to all the time. I've painted it a ton and I'm quite sure I painted this from another sketch because I do that so often working in my sketchbooks. I think I was playing around with all kinds of materials. <laughs> this right here is a painting I did a Substack video on because it was the first time I've done a painting where I used animals and birds, basically birds and one animal or a reptile as image or, or like as symbolism. And this was in response to a real tragedy we had here in Nashville. I'll put the link to that Substack post below if you want to hear about it and what all these symbolize. Uh, but this was a very meaningful painting to me. This right here is I think I was just playing around one day these two these were painted from other paintings this is of our property or the view we have from our property and this is from many paintings I've done from uh, another park here in Nashville called who what is that park called the Coliseum is at it not Shelby but oh um Centennial Park it's a nice one to paint at. I go there a lot. This is obviously an abstract that I did and I feel like I painted over, oh yes, there was a Patreon session that I did and I really made a mess of the page and it annoyed me every time I looked at it. It was kind of like a, I don't remember what it was, but anyways, one day I just desperately needed to like paint and so I just thought I'm going to do some abstracts. I actually really like my abstracts and it teaches me a lot when I do them. It teaches me to keep pushing until I make marks. I mean until I get it where I, where I like it. I just did a Instagram story. I probably should save those in my, on my Instagram page of how I do it. Um, what's with all these hairs in here? Jeez. How I do my abstracts and I had kind of like a aha moment of like, well, this is actually how I do all my painting. So basically with abstract, I just start putting stuff down, fill the page, and then I start taking away things that I don't like until I end up with everything on here that I pretty much like or I get bored with it. But that's how I do finished paintings also. I tack the, the canvas, I put things down, and then the rest of the time is taking away things that I don't like until I'm done. Let's see, I think I showed you this one before too in another video here. Um, this was done a combo of a, a young friend, so a child who we were doing some art exercises together and then I did this painting of like combining things that he did of a rocket and I can't remember what all what else but this was really fun. Some more self-portraits. I did these in um, that video. I've got a video where I did these. And these were some figures that I did not finish this painting, but I kind of liked it ghost-like like this, where everybody's just kind of floating. I prepped the page first with this yellow. Another self-portrait. 
You can see that with my self-portraits, it's not like I'm trying to get a likeness. I'm just using myself as a model. That's it. And trying to think abstractly. Sometimes I have a mirror in my hand really close to my face. And again, just use myself just as inspiration. And like, I mean, I've got green eyebrows here. I try to push myself with color. I have a feeling my scratchy voice is really going to annoy me when I watch this video back. Another self-portrait. I actually ended up doing a really large painting from this painting. Another self-portrait. Ooh, ooh, I have two pages here. I should do something with those pages. Ooh, I do like the way the glasses were rendered in that one. Another self-portrait, and then I was using, I think maybe the view out the window. This is actually another self-portrait. Again, really pushing the boundaries of color and just trying to be abstract. Often there's like things in the studio that are behind me, so like that painting, view out the window. Another view in the studio. This is that same view. It's a mirror with stars hanging. Um, this is a shelf right outside my studio. So it's nice to, to abstract things in the studio also. These were a couple faces that I, I painted very loosely. You can see right here that I painted a figure. Look at her eyes and she looks so scary. So then I painted over her, but the finished painting. Like you probably would not notice that if I hadn't pointed it out. And I love that about painting over things. Like I couldn't have made that page as interesting as it is if I had not first messed up on that very first one. Two more figures that I did recently. This is a painting of my friend Emily Powell. And so this was painted from a painting I did of her. And then this is painting I did from another painting in a live session. I was painting from a, a model. I can't remember what this is or who this is. Maybe just a picture I found online. This is a painting I did from another painting when we were in Santa Fe. I'm gonna have a class out really soon, hopefully soon, or I need to get it done, um, of when we went to Santa Fe. And this is a painting I did from another sketch and wanted to just really, really, really abstract it. I think I combined like two or three sketches to do this painting. And then this is that thin back page again and the cover. It's just nice to like use all the pages, especially if you have a very expensive sketchbook. This was done from, I think, three different, I wonder if they're in here actually. If I can find the sketches that I combined to do this, I will pop this on the screen. But I, I laid out three, two or three sketchbooks of times where I was actually at a coffee shop. And this is kind of in that same thought of like, it's fine that this person looks like they're kind of floating up here. Actually at this, in the coffee shop, she was up on this like upstairs kind of thing that you could see. But I'm trying to play around more with not feeling like things have to actually make sense. And I think, both of these were from the same coffee shop, but just different times that I was there. I love how this turned out. Okay, that is it for this one. Let's do this one. Actually, I'm gonna go see if I can find those sketchbooks real quick. Yes, I found them. So let me get the painting out so you can see it, whoops. Okay, so there's the painting. And you can see that I took this lady right here. I wanna make sure it's focusing on her. And then I also took this lady to paint this lady. And I took different elements from it. And then I also used this. So let's see. Yeah, so I used the chalkboard 
and then things like the light um, I used and the nations up here and this table with the coffee cups. So I just kind of took things from different aspects of this that I really liked and added it to this. Oh, and that painting right there is that backdrop, which kind of looks like it's out the window. So that's how I build things from my sketches. Okay, now let's do this one. Again, this is the Art Creations sketchbook. Almost always use the front and back for just color swatching and testing things. It's a nice way to just start the sketchbook or to reserve those for mark making. You can tell I did some more swatching there. Oh yeah, I remember when I started the sketchbook, I was thinking, wow, this is not getting started very good. This was from our trip to Florida. I have a whole video on that too, so you can see all of the sketches from that trip. Wow, I am like barely have a voice at this point. Same, this is still from that trip. I remember really struggling to paint this the ocean. <laughs> just was a new landscape for me and it felt really difficult. This is our room, sketch of our room. I almost always sketch the room wherever I'm on vacation. And this is from our room, the view out of our room. I did so many paintings of that, or sketches. One day I just walked around with a very small amount of supplies and just held my sketchbook and drew like different plants and stuff. And then this is that park, Centennial Park, I was telling you about, wait, Centennial? Yes, where the Coliseum is in Nashville. If you've been here for a while, you know I paint this quite a bit. I love this sketch. I've painted from this so many times. I feel like everybody just has nice like expressions. I only used watercolor, let's see what it does say. Watercolor and color pencils. I don't know what this is. I think I was, I, I don't know, probably showing a kid friend of mine something. This was the zoo. Another zoo. I love sketching at the zoo. It's really fun. Um, still the zoo. The zoo. I love these big Birds. I think they're called McKay's or McCall's. McCall's, yeah. And this is, this is a creek. Oh yeah, this may be near our house, a creek that, you know, I was just playing around with like texture. This is Shelby Park. So a different view of Shelby Park than what I showed you earlier. Uh, the other end of like this pond. And this is back at Centennial again. I can tell this is done with watercolor only. I loved the day that there was a school bus. I mean, how fun is a school bus? Just that pop of color. It's like, ooh, that's exactly what I needed. Testing swatching supplies. And my hands are so dirty now. Um, I think I was just playing around with layering and it was, I don't know that it was very effective, but there it is. And another one, kind of trying that same thing with playing around with the background and pushing it back. Also have a bird painting class. In fact, there, I think there's some sketches in here from that class. Okay, this is from Cheekwood Garden. I really enjoyed painting that day, but I don't feel like this is, I remember being a little frustrated with this. It didn't turn out like I had it envisioned, but Cheekwood Gardens here in Nashville is a great place to visit and also to paint at. Oh wait, you can't paint. You can't take paint. So this is all like marker and color pencils because you can't take paint in there anymore. Uh, what is this? This may be from Emma Carlisle's Patreon or maybe a Sarah Dyer Patreon. Yeah, I'm not sure. This is from Little Women. Um, I did a bunch of screenshots and at one point painted from that movie quite a bit. 
This was just a simple sketch, which I usually don't do. I'm such a color person, it's hard for me to just use one pencil. These are from my bird class where uh, I was teaching how to do very loose birds that are flying. And lots of practice there. I think this is back to the Little Women. And then here again, I was playing with like layering. And then I liked a little of how this was going. So then I did that here, but added some figures. I think this may be, I think I got inspired by somebody's painting from a long time ago. And so I took that composition, but was playing with like all this layering. Cause I think it was a very detailed painting. And I think what I learned from this was like, I don't like all that detail, not for me. I don't like doing it. I liked looking at it, but not doing it. Here is a coffee shop sketch. I remember this one. I went with Grady. He had a meeting with somebody there and I sat at the other side and sketched. How about those? Those were croissants. <laughs> That's fun. I remember being like, oh, I love that. That was so fun. I love all this stuff at a coffee shop. Like all the stuff on the counters and stuff. I, I just can get lost in all of that. And the things out the window also. There was a speed queen. <laughs> across the way, which was really fun. Uh, let's see, I wrapped up to do some quick sketches, not many people. I just, oh, I think this was still at the coffee shop. Yeah, and I was sketching the people. Here's where I was sketching from some family photos. This was either an Emma Carlisle, yeah, this was an Emma Carlisle Patreon session. It was either a session or I went back and painted from those uh, photos that she gave us of her mom um, picking tomatoes. I just used watercolor and color pencils here. This was of the Centennial Park of the Coliseum, a different view, and I just like abandoned. I was car sketching that day. I think it was atrociously hot, and I abandoned it. Yes, I abandoned and then went to another spot in the car and painted this. Again, just with my watercolor gouache palette using just this. I've got a video on all of this that I'll link below, but just using that and a few color pencils. This is that Patreon session again with Emma's mom. Just using, again, this palette. That's it. And another one from that same photo series that she provided. This is, let's see, Sarah and Emma did a Patreon session together. And these are from that session. And then this right here is uh, family photos of me and my cousin and Santa. I wonder if I looked that scared in the photo. Cause right there I'm like, oh no, who is this? Oh, I do like the stockings though. And the little bear, <laughs> how cute is that? I wonder if, I may have taken that from another photo, but maybe that was in the photo, I, I just can't remember. This is of some baby owls. And then I found some photos from like long ago that I painted from. I really like how these turned out. I can tell I used um, color pencil and can't tell what else actually. Maybe gelatos. This is from that same photo, the same photos that I found. I like that. I remember doing this really quick before church one Sunday. This is of uh, from Emma Carlisle's Patreon session. That's just watercolor. And this is from that same session, watercolor. Let's see, this was a birthday card I was designing. I was gonna make one for my mom and my dad. And I was just thinking through the layout and the design and some more thoughts of cards here. 
This looks like I was testing swatching like my soft pastels. I think I'd gotten some soft pastel pencils in. I cannot remember what this was sketched from, but to me it looks like I probably added like three pictures together, but I just can't remember. And doing a quick sketch before dinner here. I think I'd gotten an owl book with uh, photos of owls. This is a really bad sketch of Grady on the couch. I made him really sh weird. And then our cat. Oh, this was super fun. I'm so glad I did this because I love how these turned out. Grady was having choir practice before Christmas. They were doing like a Christmas choir thing. And so I was going to the practices and just taking like very, very, very few materials and trying to sketch everybody. Everybody moved a lot, up, down, turning their heads, all of that. It was very hard, but it was super fun to do. And I just kind of jumbled them all together. They were very much like in rows, you know, but I didn't want it to really feel like that. Here's another one from that. I love it, it's just so fun. Those just turned out so fun. I think here I was practicing and playing with some materials and just kind of using a scene that I'm used to drawing. And this is, oh, I know what this is. I drew this from a scene, a picture of um, Italy where I'm doing a art retreat there next, no, it's not next year, it's this year. I posted about it on my Substack, but it's filled up super, super quick, like within less than 24 hours, so it's already full. We do have a waiting list if you want to go over and check it out. There's links and stuff there. And just sketching friends. I love, sometimes babies just turn out so funny, don't they? <laughs> so cute. Oh, this, I think this was my final choir sketch. I think I just, like, yeah, I worked on this the entire time. I just absolutely love how these turned out. And it's, you know, I can pick out my friends and stuff and who people are. I, I wasn't trying to make them look like the people, just using them as inspiration, but I can tell who people are. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure what I was doing there. Oh, I was at a friend's house painting her. She modeled for me. And there she is right there, but I was thinking about composition and then we were at some friend's house for a new year's eve thing and i took my sketchbook and just sketched a little while we were all talking and then this was a painting session with emily powell and sarah moore we get together once or twice a week and paint on zoom together and these are from that session and then this is the one, I just came one day to like smush paint around and do kind of an abstract and ended up doing this. Not an abstract, but this. <laughs> it's even though it is kind of abstract. And then these are the last pages. I was playing around with material, not trying to do like a sketch. Just this is probably three different times. Um, I do kind of like the way that flesh tone turned out there though, not the lips. Those are not only in the wrong place, but weird, but the face part, I really like. And then this is the last page, again, where I will swatch things. So yeah, two more sketchbooks uh, where I can, when I finish them, I put the date on the outside, then I know that they're filmed, they're done, and uh, yeah. I wanted to remind you about the Learn to Paint podcast. It is now live. You can go watch it. I will link that again below. I've also recently, as I've mentioned before, had interviews on Talking with Painters twice. Those will be linked below. Actually, on my website, I have all the podcasts I've ever been on. I think it's on the About page, but you can find it pretty simply on my website. I have also posted a lot of paintings on my website for sale. I've been keeping up with that a lot better lately, maybe because I've been painting like a maniac, and so I've been trying to not get behind on that. So if you're interested in, well, I was gonna say anything you saw here, anything that was in the sketchbook is not for sale, but anything outside of the sketchbook, but also I would encourage you to go check out my website, which is sandyhester.com, linked 
below. And I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed a cup of coffee and looking through the sketchbooks. Let me know which one is your favorite sketch and what you enjoyed about it. And I will see you back here in two weeks.